This is a JTP Audio podcast. Sometimes talking with friends feels like role playing. Sometimes it feels like combat. Join us at the round table and roll initiative. This is Combudgeons and Dragons. Hello, welcome back to another Curmudgeons and Dragons. Oh my God, I've got everybody here. We finally did. And by it. here, I mean like, by here, I mean like you know, far away from each other, but like, we've all come together. We can, we, we, we got there. We got there. We figured it out. It took us, uh, took us a long ass time to get there. Guys, I gotta go. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, yeah, me too. Jack's gotta go. Yep. See you guys later. Bye. Yep. My name is Jason Portizo, and for the first time in a long time, I am joined by Josie Diaz. Oh my goodness! Hello. I've not I'm seen in you future. in person in a while, and I don't know if I ever will again. <laughs> uh, well, if you just come here for a vacation, or as the British call it, on holiday, you can. Or as the British call it, color with a U. I've always done that, so that's no different for me. Yeah, sure. And Jack O'Connell is here. That's me. How you doing, bud? You know, I'm alive. I'm breathing. I'm doing all right. I uh, I, I sent you text, and I didn't get anything back, so, um, so ouch. But uh, how did you go? The trick is to text his wife. Yeah, text my wife, who also has a terrible response time. You also texted me the day of the beer fest, I think, which was probably a bad idea. Well, I texted you to, to let you know that I planned on coming, but ended up not being able to. Oh, okay. So not only did you text me, you just also didn't show up. So you just this is a, you ghosted me. Oh, ghosting you is if I didn't text you. No, but you didn't show up. That's you stood me up. But I it's different you. than ghosting. Yeah, but you stood me up. Super, not the same thing. Yeah, you stood me up here, bad friend. How, how did it go? How did it go? Because we, because we, uh, was, we lost a lot good. of jack time because this thing. So it better be fucking great. Yeah, you're about to lose more of it because now the beer fest is over. I have to deal with like distribution and a second location. But the beer fest went good. I thought I'd have a little bit more free time afterwards, but then I kind of just went right back into the swing of things and people knocking down my door now for beers and stuff. So good. Yeah, something like that. But other than that, it was great. We had a great time. Give me that transatlantic grog. So if you're in a distribution area, go look out for uh, Doctor Brew Little's beer and. Uh, Coming to more stores, possibly near you. We're trying. So uh, I thought it'd be excellent, just uh, just tradition at this point. It is the first week of the month, and uh, we're all back together. Let's do some horror stories. You guys down? Yeah, let's do that. I love if doing horror stories. Horror story. If you try hard and believe in yourself. I read a couple horror stories last month. Um, a because I forgot there were five Fridays in October, and I did not have an episode <laughs> planned. <laughs> so that little five minute half ass Halloween episode was I just uh, want to say you could have taken off for Halloween. I went trick or treating. You I didn't had a have beer to fest. record. Oh, I went trick or treating too. That's why the episode was five minutes. I got a lot of candy. Plus I just I just, re- I just really like the story though. Any story where you're throwing a child out a window is just it's just that's great. That's true, that's fair. I didn't realize it was gonna be a comedy. <laughs> so <laughs> all right, let's get to some stories. We should roll initiative. Oh, fuck me. Hold on. Way ahead of you. I forgot we roll initiative on this show because I haven't had anybody to roll against. Uh, See, look at, look at these unprepared kids. Look at these. Unbelievable. Oh, there it goes. There goes Josie. Jason's rooting around for a die. I mean, oh, there it is. here, I, I, here I am being the most prepared out of the podcast, which is not great, guys. That's not good. I showed up 40 minutes before you. I don't want to hear it. Okay, great. And then you still didn't have a die on you. So 40 minutes it's you had right to get here. a die. 40 it's minutes. Right I was ready a month it's and right a half ago when hand. we were supposed to record. I was ready Dad 30 wins. years ago. Hey, yo. I doubt that. I'm rolling, don't know. I'm rolling you dice. You were barely ready for the beer fest. I'm rolling dice. I got a 12. I was very ready for the beer fest. I got a 14. I got a 16. Holy Suck shit. Josie's dick. going first. I didn't even get to go first in my own. I got a fucking... A one on mine when I recorded it. Okay. Well, Josie, Josie does get a, she gets a plus four to time difference right now. Does she get a minus four to initiative? <laughs> so I got a 20. Boo, time zone <laughs> jokes. I'm only four hours ahead until you guys fall back too. Yeah, we got another like two days on this. Mm-hmm. We timed it very well. We did all right. Then we'll join you in the future. Future. All right, Josie, what do you got for us? All righty. So my story is called Player Calls My Set in Garbage and then is surprised when I don't want to play with her. So the party asks me to DM since they know I've been working on a homebrew world. My world is a more traditional fantasy setting. Humans are the majority with a small group of elves who live in the woods with gnomes and halflings. The dwarves live in the mountain. The orcs and goblins live in a swamp. 
I limited races to these seven choices. We were running session zero where I'm explaining the game setting when one player asks why I limited races. I told her I wanted to make culture a big part of this campaign and it was easier for me to write racial history for a smaller group of races, plus these races just feel more organic. She tells me she wanted to play a Yanti rogue. I tell her I'd rather you stick with these races. She says that those races are boring and she asks if I'd rather try something new. I tell her, maybe after this campaign, she says she'd rather not play in a Lord of the Rings ripoff. I told her that's not what's happening here. I try and explain the differences, but she loudly yawns in the middle of my explanation. Nobody's going to loudly yawn. Okay. Uh, she tells me that my setting is going to get boring real uh, quick. Thank you. There was, we go. Yeah. I asked if she still wants to play, if she thinks it'll be boring. She says, yeah, but when the setting turns out to be garbage, she gets to say, I told you so which is rude as fuck, Jesus. and I don't know why they even let her stay at this point. At this point, I tell her she doesn't have to play then. She says there's no reason to act like that. I tell her it's fine, but you'll just play the next one. She refuses to leave. She stays damn near the whole session, trying to convince me to let her play. The session ends, and she basically begs me to accept her apology. I tell her I'm not mad, but this obviously isn't the campaign for her. The next session, she calls us each like five times while we're playing, and when we finally answer, she just wants to see how the session's going. We had to start playing with our phones on mute. Unfortunate. Wild. It's like the assumption that it's going to be boring with only using those races is just basically admitting that you are boring. Yeah. You've given me seven options, and I can't pick any of them. They'll be too boring because I don't have a single thought in my stupid fucking head. None of them are special enough. For how special I need to be. Fun fact, people suck. <laughs> and I mean, like, that's a lot of races to work with. That's plenty. That's plenty. And like for, for a normal, like high fantasy campaign, that's that's all of them. Yeah. Uh sorry if you're uh you know your half snake fucking edgelord can't go edgelording around. Fuck that chick. Glad she's not playing. Hope she's I'm kind of glad yeah. that it's it's very funny to me when somebody's like, Well, maybe I just won't play then. And they're like, okay. Like, yeah, wait, right, no. no. Yeah. No, I no. wanted you to say no, you have to stay and then to not leave. I'm assuming it was at somebody's house and not somewhere where they could just like kick her from the call or something. Yeah. Well, the other thing that people forget too is that uh all it takes is one, folks. All it takes is one. That's good or bad. You get one you get one yeah. person you know kicking in the door and being cool to everyone. Next thing you know, everyone's being cool. Yeah, or you suck and then other people suck. But uh, yeah, I hope she's uh, not playing that game or any other game, and she's uh, uh, you know doing drugs with the cool kids. I hope somebody uh, else actually hears no, this then, story because then she's cool, and then uh, figures out who it is and bans her from their game as well. Slash drug party. Yeah. <laughs> also, like, just because it's a sort of more traditional race setting doesn't mean that it's a Lord of the Rings ripoff. I don't think that I don't think J.R.R. Tolkien invented goblins, just like or elves. I think they were around for a while prior to him. Did invent hobbits though? Yeah, I I said nothing about the hobbits. And and that's that's kind of the the trade off for that being like the quintessential poster child for high fantasy. Mm. Where now when any any high fantasy thing comes up. Uh, it's either accused of being a Lord of the Rings ripoff or it's too easy to accidentally become a Lord of the Rings ripoff, whether you're trying to or not. There's just so much stuff in it that it's hard to not sound like you're pulling sure. something from it. Uh, but, you know, a talented DM can pay homage to the important parts while uh, being creative enough around the original parts. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with taking a little inspiration from somewhere. That's how stuff gets created. That's how most people write. If you're trying that hard to avoid Lord of the Rings references, go play Star Wars. I mean, I I even think that now it's hard to have an original idea. There's always going to be something you're pulling from somewhere. Like you can't be 100% original now. The fun thing about that is, is that nothing exists in a vacuum. And we're just retelling the same stories through the centuries with like a little different paint on it. Including stories about people who don't know how to play games with other people. Yeah, those people suck. <laughs> Jack, what you got? Uh, I definitely didn't have that horror story, which I then had to basically <laughs> scramble to find 
<laughs> Another one. Who would that definitely? The second I heard that title, I was like, God damn it. <laughs> like, scroll, scroll, scroll. Google, Google, okay. Google. Uh, I even told funny. you that's guys my I title well just so we didn't have this problem. I just didn't think about it, though, because you only said your title. And you're like, what are the odds? I did find one, though. We're fine. Watch his mind. <laughs> All right. Watch, watch his mind now. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so mine, I wanted to. I picked one that doesn't blame the DM or the players. Ooh. Oh my god, does everyone suck? Yeah, is this oops? Sort of. Is this oops? All assholes part two? No, this is uh, oops. All dice part two. So sometimes a real horror story isn't the players or DM. This happened today, which was not obviously today, but four days ago. So we're in the future. Uh, I was running a session in one of the Long Minds module for new players. The first fight is against four goblins. I'd modified one by lowering his AC and giving him cantrips, mostly sapping sting, which is one D4 prone chance. Surely this would be an easy fight, I thought, especially since I can tweak the HP of the goblins or even have them run once they lose a few. And two of the four players can heal. You think no problem. Cut to four turns later. Two players are down. One is dead, and the remaining player is on third HP. The goblins, despite being flanked often, have not been hit once. Jesus. This was the worst run on dice I've ever seen. Over about a dozen rolls, we had eight critical fails. The cleric used both his spell slots on Healing Word, and despite having an AC of 18, still went down to two attacks. The druid died after failing, and then crit failing his death saves. The warlock, despite having 16 charisma, missed every single Eldritch Blast he used. Jesus. I just gave up, and Thanos snapped the goblins to avoid a TPK. Going to have to start rolling behind his DM screen. I love oh the idea of, the, uh, of a Thanos snap. Yeah. So a uh, bunch of goblins were the assholes. I mean, technically, listen, the goblins did a great job. There's, I will say, there's the one. Goblins were just doing what they do best. It's being goblins that's causing chaos. Yeah, goblins gonna gob. There's one. There is one bad thing that I can pick from this from a DM standpoint. Even though I hate doing it, which is roll behind a DM screen. Why would you not roll behind a DM screen? Just put one up, and then you can fake rolls. I fake rolls in almost every session I've played because I don't want to kill people like that. Oh, the best part about like, being a DM is lying to your players. <laughs> 18 critical hits and killing th- three, almost three out of your four players, or killing a player, putting two down. Or there's eight, uh, eight, eight out of 12 critical fails. Mm-hmm. Like, just lie. Just say, oh, it hit a 17. What's your D? I've had plenty of times where I remember someone's AC and then I'll be like, oh, wait, what's your AC? And they'll be like, 18. But oh, I miss this. I don't worry about it. Because, you know, I mean, your first fight, if you're like deep into a campaign, like you're a few years in and like this happens, like, hey, you're a few years in, you made it and you something just got fucky and this is what happened. But like your first like five sessions, just lie. It's really easy. Just do it. I do it all the time right. in D and D. And also like super long, super long into a campaign. That's that, suspicious. You, that just opens up a side quest of going to find a cleric to revive you. I mean that that's that's not even yeah, that's, that's not even the end of the campaign. Easy to do. It's barely yeah. the end of that session. There's something to be said when the dice tell the story for you. And there's there is something yeah, like kind of there is something kind of cool. Let's just let's just you know. T- and we, those we, dice said die motherfucker. <laughs> you know we're not the players in this game, so we are not as emotionally invested as they are. But like from an outsider, from a story, a story here, a story listening, story reading point of view, um, you know, they j- they tripped. They they went in with uh, with hubris and they walked out dead. Like it's, uh, yeah. you know, hey, it's a bunch of goblins over there. Surely they won't kick our ass. Yeah, the dice did not want that session to happen. And the dice are like, hey, guess what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the dice are better storytellers than us th- uh, sometimes. Yeah. But yeah, I figured that I wanted to not blame the DM or the players for once that I found that. And I was like, perfect. It's not always my fault. Now you want to talk about like Just player and, you want to talk about player enjoyment and stuff like that. Okay. They probably hated rolling that many ones in a row. But how yeah. long do you think they're gonna tell the story of that session? Oh, forever. That's it. This you know, good or bad, that left an impression on them. Mm-hmm. Hundred percent. So like I wouldn't even be I mean, I'd be I'd be furious at that that day, but I think immediately after there's no way you tell that story to any other player without dying laughing the whole time no like that's it that's your life now oh those players have their numbers because they got to call each other to corroborate the story every time they meet somebody new <laughs> yeah like, i swear it happened jack jack how many ones did i roll all of them you roll all the ones <laughs> oh, all the ones <laughs> every one you possibly could have rolled mm-hmm. maybe uh, they that- had my dice that might have been the problem yeah that's why uh in a couple episodes back when we went you know things to do in between sessions uh, you got to roll those ones out. You just take you just all, get rid just of take them. all your d twenties and roll them all until you get a one to get the get the next one out of there. No, nah, I think just let just let it happen. Just just let. I mean, the dice are going to do what the dice are going to do. Quality horror story because it. This is no one's fault. This is just how things shake out. A wise man once said, "It really do be like that sometimes." It really do be like that sometimes. <laughs> That's right. 
I think that was Gandhi. Yeah. I think it was Grog. All right. <laughs> All right, great. Yeah, Jason, Jason, I think you're up. I think so. I, I like stories like this, and I've read a couple things around the same kind of topic. So I'm glad that people are still having issues with this. This is the Amnesiac Warforge and why I don't allow amnesia backstories. This story happened a long time ago. I was DMing a game of 5e on Roll20 and gotten together what I thought was a pretty good group. During our session zero, one of our players, after listening to the other players pitch and talk about their character concepts and backstory ideas, decides that he wants to play a Warforged who woke up washed ashore with nothing more than a rusty cutlass. Anyway, I decide that I can make this work, but when I ask him for a backstory for his character, he decides he wants me to decide that, so when his character regains his memories, it'll be a surprise for him as well. I was a bit annoyed at the time, as what I saw was having to basically write out a player's backstory for them, but I thought I'd give it a go. As the game progresses, I begin to notice more and more prima donna tendencies from Warforged player. Constantly dragging the game to a halt to bemoan his lack of memories of the past, making nearly every moment about him and constantly filling the game chat with references to his character's hidden past. Come to the session where the fragments of his memories, which I've been uh, drip feeding him so far, came back to him in a great crash at the sound of a tidal wave spell that our wizard cast. He remembered that he'd been part of a pirate crew where he'd served as a crewmate and makeshift anchor when the need befitted to scour the ocean floor for treasure. Until one day, he and his crew were set upon by a rival crew, which destroyed their ship and slaughtered his friends to a man. Set adrift on the ocean floor, the ocean currents set him adrift and the pressure damaged his memories to the point where he eventually found himself washed ashore not knowing who he was. I thought this was a cool backstory that that was consistent with his character and gave him a simple but effective revenge hook. But the player, he immediately left the call before sending me a tirade saying that he hated his backstory and that I completely ignored his hints. I had literally no idea what he was talking about and told him that he gave me permission to write his backstory and that he had no right to complain about a backstory he had no part in making. He sends a few more parting shots and then blocks me and the rest of the players and leaves the game. To this day, I don't know if he hyped up his imagined backstory to the point where nothing I could come up with could compare or what, but still baffles me. TLDR, player who plays Amnesiac, makes me come up with backstory for his character, then complains about said backstory. I mean, like, having an amnesia thing, I guess, could be kind of fun, but that's just him being lazy. That was literally just like, I don't really feel like coming up with it right now you do it i think he's being more dramatic than lazy because he clearly had a backstory in mind that he yeah. dropped hints for or he claims to and like i mean devil's advocate i actually kind of like the idea of having a dm design an amnesia backstory as long as you both agree like hey if the DM's this is cool what i want to play yeah but if, you, if i design a whole backstory for you and it works with a spell and there's revenge and all this shit and you fucking act like that fuck you buddy <laughs> and, bye and, and that story was kind of cool. Yeah. I really liked good, that. That was a I well-crafted actually, backstory. I thought when you started it, that that was actually like his backstory. And I was like, sure. oh, well, like why the fuck didn't he just say that at the beginning? The little detail of like, cause he's a war force. So they were using him as an anchor. And like, that was really fun. I liked having, that. Having him search for treasure on the ocean floor. That's some cool shit. Like, uh, idea. like absolute bravo to that DM for, uh, for dealing with the bullshit to begin with and knocking it out of the park and you know fuck this player for being a uh an unappreciative little snot i don't think yeah, it's a I horror story about gonna... the amnesia i think it's a horror story about the guy being an asshole of course the amnesia thing yeah. i think it's cool i think that's cool i think a lot of the time people use the amnesia thing just to like get out of having to come up with a backstory which is just being lazy yeah and i don't think that was the case here because he, he had a secret he had a secret backstory in mind uh well, that, he, that he was mad that he should have been like then he shouldn't have told the DM, like, but you come up with it. Like, if you've already agreed that you're giving that creative bit to the DM to work with, you don't get to be a bitch about it later. How about you don't be a bitch about anything for any reason? That's yeah. that's an option. We can all okay, we can all be a little <laughs> a bitch as a treat. Fine. No. Nope. You can you can no earn bitch. your earn your bitchitude. Thank you. That's what you use your inspiration die for, is to be a little a bitch. You must have a lot of inspiration died, Josie. I do, as a matter of fact, and they're all from you.
excellent stories. Miss you guys. I know it's been it's been a long time. It's definitely not been mostly my fault. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's so nice to see your beautiful faces again. Yeah, we're uh, we're we are in different continents, but uh, we are recording this while on Zoom, so we can actually look at each other. Yeah, I've, it's I have windows. I, in, I have windows in front of them, so I don't have to see them. But you know, the option is there. So that's cool. Um, I've yeah. just been looking at Jack's cats. <laughs> They're not there anymore, but there was one hanging out on a tank behind him who I was very interested in giving kisses to. That's our new cat egg roll. How did uh, how did you guys like doing the solo sods? I enjoyed it. I like talking to myself. I'm really good at it. You you both I... um, legit impressed me with, <laughs> with, with how well you did. You, you guys did great. And I'm looking at my like eight minute episode. I'm like, I got to step up my game. Yeah, get well, it I'm together, sitting dude. there like, I don't have anybody to remind me what I just said, which is a problem. I that have. I can't help you. I had a few beers. I pressed record, and that was a one and done take, folks. I uh, I wrote what was essentially like a blog post, and then I just read it. And I'm like, well, no, I'm like, I well, just, it, that's it. Took me 25. There's your problem. It took me 25 minutes to write it. It's got to take me 25 minutes to read it. That's not how that works. <laughs> that's not how that works. That's a future, but no, that's I'm telling you, reference. just have 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 a couple of beers, and then just just talk. Yeah, that's the best way to do it. Yeah. I was referencing my notes from school, so it made it a little bit. Yeah, we more know. We can all tell. <laughs> That much was clear. I was referencing these notes. Jack's pointing to his head, by the way. Yeah. Audio podcast. Oh, I thought yes. he was just flipping us off. It's both. It's both. Now it's both. Chat, that's very rude. Uh, what are you going to do about it? Uh, not. I'm going to take nothing, away your inspiration, You're like an hour and a half away. That's right. I thought the episodes were uh, were pretty good, all things considered. Uh, I le- Thanks, Dad. I legit fucking miss hanging out with you guys and talking about this silly little game that we never actually get to play. I know. I remember the last time I actually played D&D. I was there. And it's uh, with we're almost on schedule for our second session. Yeah. yeah. It's only I, I, you said you want to do a one a, like one episode per year, right? Yeah. I said I wanted it to be like a one shot, but also be like a full campaign. So if we just play. Technically, it was a one shot. If we play literally once a year, that's just on schedule. Yeah, if I never ever do it again with you, we did a one shot mission accomplished. Now, See you later. I win. Now imagine we're just like, hey, um, uh, I'm going out to dinner tonight. Uh, can we just skip this one? We'll do what we'll play next year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, speaking of dinner, it is dinner time for me, and I have duck curry waiting. I think Josie's trying to say that that's all the episode we've got for you today. Thanks so much for listening, Jack. Would you mind taking us out? I mean, I guess so. Uh, we like we like you, and we like hearing from you, and we like knowing how you feel about us. Except for me, it has to be all nice things, or I get very upset. Uh, so if you want to drop us a line about some episode ideas or how you feel about the show, uh, you can reach out to us on curmudgeons and dragons pod at gmail.com, uh, wherever podcasts are, you're going to find us and then leave us a review. We like reviews. We still have pins for all you beautiful people. Got about leave 10 us a review. pins left. I would love to give them away. I mean, that's 10, that's 10 reviews right there. I'm actually going to create separate accounts for all those pins. So no one else can have them. Uh, but drop us a line, send us a little screenshot of your, uh, of your review, we'd love to hear from you again. That's uh, curmudgeons and dragons pod at gmail.com. Uh, I was and still is Jack O'Connell. We had uh, Jason join us today. Thanks, Jack. And we had Josie, and it was wonderful. And I miss all of you, and hopefully, we can do this again sometime. Definitely not in two minutes. We should have a real life hug for the next one. Yeah. All right. So we can't record until we can real life hug. That's it. <laughs> you heard it here. I'll well, see you in May. That's the end of that show. <laughs> There it goes. All right. Well, I love you all, and I'll talk to you all soon. See you next time. Take it easy, guys. Bye. Thank you for listening to Curmudgeons and Dragons. Please share this with your favorite adventurers. Leave a review on Apple and follow us on social media. All links can be found at curmudgeonsanddragons.com. Practice safe adventuring, my friends. This has been a JTP Audio Podcast. Thanks for listening.